welcome to Tribulation 515 2011. Today is tax day, my friends. April 15th, 2013. You know, if uh, if you haven't done your taxes, time is running out. I had to do that. <laughs> hey, uh, this is your first time to... Uh, tribulation. This is my personal witness and testimony to the tribulation that is literally unfolding right in front of my eyes. And the world continues to spiral downwards into chaos, my friends. We have reached day 710. 710. You know what that is? That's my birthday, folks. I was born on July 10th. And of course, you know, I put the number 62. That's the year I was born, 1962. So, uh, somehow, you know, the tribulation count is tied once again into my birthday. And 62 represents judgment, my friends, if you look up in numerology. So, today we got some 62s. Uh, out here in San Jose, uh, it's going to get to 62 degrees. It's a beautiful, sunny, but windy Winds from 20 to 30 miles an hour gusting, but the sun is just awesome. There was some, it looked like it was going to rain, but it's going to get up to 62 degrees today here in San Jose. The stock market, when I last checked, it was down 162 points. And uh, what everybody's talking about is that gold and silver is collapsing. And my friends, the bubble is beginning to pop. You know, gold is down 27% and falling from its high point, you know. It's all about fake money, distortion, and corruption around the globe, you know, in the highest places. Uh, so, you know, if this is your first time here, that means, uh, you know, your eyes are opened. You know, you're seeing what the hell's going on. And there is a lot going on, my friends. For those of you that have been with me, for the last 710 days, you know, hey, keep the fight, you know. But, uh, you know, to me, it's all about not, you know, falling into the machine. And on, on uh, Operation End Times, I put up a couple of videos. Uh, the latest one is Into the Machine, you know, where I'm talking about the Matrix. So you can go over there and check that out. But that's what's happening, my friends. <clears throat> you know, the machine, the beast, um... You know, George Bush used a term when he was in office. He used the term, there's an axis of evil, my friends. And uh, you know what? Uh, a couple of those countries that he threw into that axis of evil was like North Korea, Iran, and I think it was like Iraq. But, you know, a lot of people laughed at him. But, you know, as we stand here today in 2013 where the world is looking like an ever more dangerous and chaotic place... There is an access of evil, my friends. But, you know, at this point, I'd actually call it more of a, a coalition of evil. And uh, you'll notice, uh, as I read off these countries, you know, it's all countries that have heavy-handed, heavy-fisted, big government control all societies where people's freedoms are really not, uh, you know, guaranteed. But when you look at the access of evil, I'd say the big three... You know, because that's how, like, World War, World War II happened. Germany, uh, Japan, and uh, Italy, you know, was the axis of evil. But uh, right now, I'd probably say it's Iran, North Korea, and Russia. And in the news, Iran over the weekend was saying, you know what, if you do anything to North Korea, we will destroy America. You know, they hate us. But, uh, like I said, it's more of a, a coalition so I would throw other countries in on the mix. China, I don't believe, is a friend of ours. Pakistan hates our guts because we invaded their country to kill Osama when Obama had uh, Osama assassinated. Uh, you know, Syria, of course, hates our guts. And there's a civil war where, you know, probably 100,000 plus people have been killed and our president refuses to do anything about it. Even though he came out and told us like two years ago when he bombed the shit out of Libya that he would never allow you know, that kind of violence and killing of civilians, and yet there he sits in his office not doing a damn thing, and there's people dying everywhere, my friends, especially in Syria. <laughs> uh, I'd say 
you know, Iraq, the country we liberated, is no longer our friend. Turkey's probably not our friend. Egypt, you know, they're not going to be our friends. And then, of course, you know, you could throw in a whole bunch of other people, you know, people you might not even expect, but I'd say Germany, you know, I love German people. One of my best friends is German, but you know what? Germans, they started two world wars, so why wouldn't they be in on the third one on the wrong side as well? And of course, uh, you know, like Venezuela just elected a new president. The guy was the hand-picked successor to the tyrannical dictator uh, Chavez. I forget what the guy's name is, Moldado or something like that. But you know what? It was a rigged election because corruption is all through the system. So if you think Venezuela has a fair election, then you are in a distortion bubble, man. Because th that government over there, they go around and round up people by gunpoint and tell them to go down and vote for a certain dude. You know, the guy that just got elected. You know, I don't think Mexico's our friend. Cuba's not our friend. And, you know, there's other countries. Like, the Philippines probably aren't really our friends. And, you know what? The Japanese, you know, who knows where they stand. You know, that once again, they were on the wrong side of a war. So, if something broke out, if the globe all of a sudden started World War III, these are all countries that probably are not on our side. The coalition of evil. And, uh, of course, you know, the craziness continues. Uh, there's been bunches and bunches of 6.0 earthquakes and more, and there's still all sorts of uh, crazy alignments coming up. Uh, you know, there's a major case of the bird flu breaking out in China. I think it's up to 62 people have died so far. <laughs> Amazing how that number keeps coming up. Um, just some other miscellaneous... Uh, uh, notices or, or things to note. Um, oh yeah, this was the Sunday morning cartoon here in the Mercury News, and I just found it interesting because I've probably talked about it here on this channel where I've brought up the fact that Jerry Brown said that California is uh, uh, Egypt and he was the pharaoh. And, uh, you know, I've, I've talked about some stuff where it's about the exodus and the parting of the Red Sea, especially over on Operation End Times. I've talked about that recently. But here's the cartoon on the Sunday, the political cartoon in the, the Mercury News of the Sunday paper this Sunday. Look at this, you know. But it's got, it's got a course in miracles. And the first miracle is the Red Sea parting with Moses walking through. Then it's walking on water, Jesus walking on water. And then it's the U.S. Senators, uh, guns and immigration uh, cooperating to come up with some new laws that take away our rights and allow illegal aliens to enter into America unrestricted. But uh, isn't that crazy, man? Like it all kind of ties together, man, you know, <laughs> and to what I've been saying lately. You know, is that just coincidences? I'll tell you what, my friends, there are no coincid coincidences anymore. Uh, just to kind of rip through some final things, man, you know, it's like the 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 lusts of the dark side people, instead of following the will of God, you know, chasing after their own desires, you know, lust for power, lust for fame, lust for fortune, is creating just distortions on the, you know, pe the shadows are increasing. So uh, I wanted to just touch on it. I watched a basketball game Friday night. It was the Oakland Warriors against the Los Angeles Lakers. And man, I've never seen a game that was such a distortion. We've known for years that the NBA has a distortion field in it because what they want people to believe is that uh, professional basketball is completely an open and honest sport that's based purely on the athletes playing at their best levels. But those of us in the know have known for years that that's not quite so, that there's corruption at the highest levels and they actually want certain teams to win, you know, from the bigger markets like the Lakers or Chicago, Boston, whatever. So the officials actually rig games, you know, to have the teams they want win-win. And there was actually an official that came out a couple of years back, three, four, five years ago, where he got busted and he literally admitted it. But people have short memories and they forget. But that game Friday night, you know, the Lakers are hanging by a hair and the NBA wanted them to get into the playoffs. So that in that game, they barely won by one point, but the, the lead official called 56 fouls on the Warriors to only 16 on the Lakers. And every time Kobe Bryant got the ball, if there was a player even within like four feet of him, it was like, beep! 
deep foul. And, you know, the announcers were like, what? The dude is three feet from Kobe Brown. He never even touched him. So it was the most distorted game I've ever seen. Worse than even back when the Lakers had Shaq and Kobe and they won their championship. You know, the, the officials literally gave the Lakers 30 points, and yet they barely won by one point. But the way fate, destiny uh, works out is in that game, we may have seen the end of Kobe Bryant because he tore his Achilles tendon. And now, whether he ever returns to the game, you know, you know, we'll, we'll have to find out. And now the Lakers, even if they make it into the playoffs, they're not going to have their superstar. So it may have all been for naught. But that's how distortion works is, you know, darkness manifests more darkness. You know, you don't get any truth or glory out of distortion and manipulation. You know, corruption breeds more corruption and destruction. Um, you know, uh, just a minor note, I saw in the news today, uh, you know, our beloved President Barack Obama, you know, we should pray for him every day to have his eyes open to the truth and to walk in light and not in distortion. But, the sad truth, my friends, is this president is a complete veil of distortion on multi-levels from the health care, Obamacare distortion, which nobody understands, and it's going to just, it's taking this country down a shadow path, man, which is not good, you know, uh, to his foreign policy, which nobody understands, the lead from behind, which makes absolutely no sense, you know, it's all distortions, to Eric, Eric Holder, you know, the uh, district, uh, uh, the uh, United States uh, head of the Department of Justice, uh, you know, he's one of the, the most corrupt dudes ever, you know. Even when he was back with Bill Clinton, you know, he, he was part of the Waco, Texas thing, the Alien Gonzalez, you know, just his name pops up again and again and again. He was there when all the guns were being run across the border, uh, you know. Uh, but, hey, here's the latest story is... You know, they're busting Obama, his labor secretary, you know, and Obama has sold his soul to the union. So there's all sorts of backdoor deals always being cut, all sorts of corruption and, and distortion where he said he'd be the most open and transparent uh, administration ever. That was the biggest lie. That was a huge distortion field that was just thrown out there. So here, his labor secretary, Thomas Perez, who's a, a union guy who's in the back pocket of the union, he cut a deal with a city in Minnesota and he coordinated it with Eric Holder and they did the whole deal because they didn't want a case that the city of Minnesota was bringing against the uh, the United States federal uh, court system to go through because they were afraid the ruling would go against the federal government. And it was all about property rights and the federal government's ability to seize land. And uh, they didn't want that to go uh, to court for to get justice, you know, so those people are being denied, and it's costing the taxpayers $200 million because in, a, in, the, in the guts of the deal, the uh, 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 Minnesota uh, has some kind of court case they were doing, and they dropped their case, but it was all shady backroom, you know, c cigar smoking, screw the taxpayer, you know, quid pro quo bullshit, you know, and that, my friends, unfortunately, is our government, you know, it's permeated, it's both Republicans and Democrats, but you know what, Obama's no saint, man, you know, he's walking in a shadow, so we need to pray, and pray hard for that guy, you know, because he is our president. And, uh, you know, finally, one final note, uh, you know, I'm still working towards getting towards Mount Diablo, you know, I don't know why it's taking so long and God will surely tell me when I have to go up that mountain. But I just want to make a note. Uh, you know, I've been doing these storage wars and I was going to go do a storage war up in this town of uh, 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 Oakley and uh, Brentwood where a good friend of mine lives. And then, you know, they're right within 10 minutes of Mount Diablo. And on the other side of Mount Diablo, on the east side, is Danville. You know, Dan, the tribe of Dan. So you got Mount Diablo, the tribe of Dan down below, which Dan is like the, the mighty men, the, uh, the locust. You know, and in front of Mount Diablo, the devil's pulpit, is Moses' ridge. So there's all this spiritual spooky stuff. And even Brentwood and Oakley, you know, Oak is the mighty, you know. So is that like the good side and the bad side? You know, the army's kind of getting ready to, you know, uh, clash at the base of the mountain. You know, who knows? But I will surely find out because it is in the cards, my friends. But what I wanted to tell you is, you know, these storage wars, they have about four or five shows on TV. There's Storage Wars, Texas, New York, California, California. 
you know, and I've been watching it a lot because I've been, I, then I said, I'm going to go do that. But dude, talk about distortion, man. What I'll tell you is nothing you see on TV is real. I mean, everything you see on TV is staged and faked in some way. So with Storage Wars, the biggest distortion is when you're watching the shows on TV, they constantly edit in a scene of somebody cutting a lock to the storage facility and then them opening up the storage locker. And they, they give the appearance that you know, whoever owned that locker, all their stuff is in there and that there's treasures to be found. And then they, everybody that bids on these TV shows, the lockers are always filled with diamonds, you know, goodies worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. But I'm going to tell you, most of that is just pure distortion. And the TV shows are probably putting stuff in the lockers. Because I'll tell you, my friends, all the storage wars I've gone to, they don't cut no locks. You know, the locks have been removed and the storage uh, uh, facility, the managers open up the storage with keys, man because it's from locks they've put on the storage. And I've actually heard both the managers and the auctioneers whispering where they thought nobody heard. But there's multiple layers of corruption and looting of the lockers from the owners who try and loot their own lockers as they're getting ready to stop paying their bill. They remove all their good stuff to the managers and their employees looting the lockers to even the original owners looting it a second time at, by bidding for their own locker, like sending in a friend to do the bidding because they know what they left behind in their locker. All of it is a form of looting and corruption. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm not going to do the storage wars, but, you know, here's the truth, man. You know, there's a lot of us out there, you know, to me, it's, it's like, you know, if you watch Operation End Times, I'm saying, you know, I'm on the, the right side, the side of light, you know, the kingdom of God. But... For a lot of us, life is getting tougher, you know, where we're get, we're losing our jobs, going broke, and it's a blessing, man, because we're being literally ripped out of the system so that we don't get sucked into the machine, you know, so it is really a blessing when you're looking at the current system and it's like, man, I feel like I'm a square peg being shoved into a round hole, but that's what I found, you know, because I'm, I'm highly talented, but even when I worked at Apple, I didn't like playing office politics and brown nosing and doing all that shadowy stuff to get ahead. I just you know, I tried to just kick ass and take names, you know, that's that's the way I operated. But when I tried to do my own business, you know, I was doing video production for 17 years and, uh, you know, in the entertainment industry, it's nothing but snakes and wolves and, and a lot of shadows and everybody trying to get over on everybody. And, you know, that's the truth of it, is that if you're walking upright and you're saying, I'm an honest individual and I'm going to trust people, you know what? The world is getting to be a harder and harder place for you to operate in because nobody else is working on those rules. You know, they're sleeking around trying to get theirs at any cost and get over, you know, doing quick turns on houses, even in the TV shows, you know, the antique shows, the, the uh, American Pickers, the Storage Wars. They always want to find something and then sell it for a hundred times what they paid for it so they can get the, their instantaneous super gratification. And I'll tell you what, if that's how the world works, and that is how the world is working, then every single system and uh, aspect of our society is corrupt and broken and unsustainable. Because, you know, you can't be doubling and tripling house prices every year. You know, uh, a car that is a rusty bucket of bolts, you know, can't be worth $2 million. You know, it's insane. You know, but that's what we're living in, my friends, is uh, some kind of insane distortion field. But, there's a way to clear the smoke, man, and to get to the truth. <laughs> Open your eyes. So, stay thirsty for the truth, my friends. And when you find it, drink hard, drink long, and drink well. Fill yourself. All right, God bless y'all. This is Tribulation 515, 2011. Think positive, man. <laughs>